Hello and welcome to the October 28th, 2022 edition of Watching the Tape. I would imagine that each and every one of you watching this is on board with the merits of diversification. We've all heard enough about it. We've seen the benefits, the evidence is there. Proper diversification reduces portfolio volatility and more importantly, in a year like the one we're having now, it limits the downside of your investment portfolio. So for our purposes today, let's focus on the S&P 500, which is a diversified mix of large cap US stocks. So with the S&P 500 being down 19% year to date, it can sort of feel like it's just one big loser this year. But even in a really bad year, like the one we're experiencing now in 2022, there still are some winners. And these winners are serving to prevent the index from being down even more this year. So on a count basis, this is not market cap, but 24% of the individual stocks in the S&P 500 are actually in the green this year. And within that, the uh, or part of that, the far and away, the best performing sector within the S&P 500 is the energy sector, and it's up 63% year to date. Now, keep in mind, the energy index makes up only 5% of the overall S&P 500 index. But I want to highlight uh, a different group, a small group of winners uh, outside the energy space that, that caught my attention this week. And this group is actually in the Consumer Discretionary Index. And that particular index is down 29% year to date. But if we were to drill down into that and look at the the winners and losers within that sector. You can see at the top there, Genuine Parts, AutoZone, and O'Reilly Automotive. So the think of uh, Genuine Parts as being just Napa for our purposes. And I, for one, am a loyal customer of, of O'Reilly's. I perform all of the, the maintenance and minor repairs on the, the Smith household fleet of vehicles. Um, I'm not a gearhead by any means, but uh, due to, to some combination of uh, frugality and curiosity, I've always just preferred to do all that stuff in-house. But, but nevertheless, what gives? Why are stock investors so enthusiastic about auto parts retailers this year? And this is where some storylines can, can be useful. I love a good economic uh, theme or, or story. So in my former life as a securities analyst, uh, using a story or market theme to support an investment thesis was always very helpful. All right, so in the case of auto parts retailers, there are a few major storylines that are playing out. So let's go to the charts to see if uh, if these stories check out. First, this is uh, a chart of miles driven in the U.S. And so as people return to the offices, um, or to their offices, the, the the number of miles is increasing, and that has a positive correlation with the need or demand for replacement parts and fluids for vehicles. So that's one. Secondly, the um, new cars are hard to find, and used car prices, as shown in this chart, just skyrocketed in in the post COVID world. Um, it 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 seems like it might be coming down a little bit, but you combine this with the um, increased cost of financing, so increasing interest rates on auto loans, and it just leads to an affordability uh, challenge that is leading to people to hold on to their existing cars or their current cars and and maintain those. So that creates demand for uh, replacement parts as well. And then if, if you think about the natural outcome of this, the average age of the vehicle on the road today is uh, at 13.1 years. That's for cars. And then combined, if you combine that with light trucks, it's at 12.2 uh, years. So in, in any case, it's higher than it was. It, it's, it's continuing to increase, which leads to um, you know, older cars just need more maintenance. And so that's another tailwind in support of auto parts retailers. So so there you go. Uh, don't know what the future holds, but it certainly makes sense that, uh, that investors would be um, bidding up the, the value of these stock prices this year. That's it.
We'll see you in two weeks.